most of us who want to homeschool our kids classically want it because classical seems synonymous to a good education. We want to homeschool to give our kids a good education, but how can we do that when there are so many of them running around? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Hello, I'm Misty Winkler. I write and podcast at simplyconvivial.com about homemaking, homeschooling, and doing life cheerfully. I'm also the author of the brand new book, The Convivial Homeschool, Gospel Encouragement for Keeping Your Sanity While Living and Learning Alongside Your Kids. And I have learned in the dozen or so years that I have been homeschooling that homeschooling is about sanctification first and foremost. And it's our sanctification as homeschool moms that is our primary responsibility. The rest is all overflow and occasion for that sanctification, that work that God is doing in our life. We've been classically homeschooling for about 13 years now. And when my oldest turned six, I was pregnant with baby number four and had an 18 month old getting into everything and a four year old who wanted to do everything that his older siblings were doing. I get it. Let's talk today about how we can classically homeschool with multiple ages of kids all tagging along around the table. Let's dig in. So at this point in the game, I have a graduate who got his two-year degree while he was in high school at the community college and is now a junior getting his bachelor's degree. My second son is in that same dual enrollment program working on his two-year degree. And so I'm only homeschooling three now actively and my youngest is nine. So those busy, intense years are behind me, but they would be unforgettable except for the fact that you don't sleep as much and therefore you form fewer memories. <laughs> but I have been there and lived to tell the tale and I can tell you that it is possible to classically educate a parcel of kids at home. You don't need to personally tutor each child in each subject to achieve your goals or to educate well. You don't need to do every page in every curriculum's book for it to count as done either. There's a lot that you don't need to do. And there's only a few things that you do really need. One thing I know, people make it harder than it needs to be. And some curriculum companies thrive on confusion and insecurity. We can't homeschool well without confidence and independence, freedom of mind. Classical education should bring forth both confidence and freedom by its very nature. If it doesn't, it's probably not actually classical. So let's start off with a definition of classical education given by the Searcy Institute. Classical Christian education is the cultivation of wisdom and virtue by nourishing the soul on truth, goodness, and beauty by means of the seven liberal arts and the four sciences so that in Christ, the student is enabled to better know, glorify, and enjoy God. This succinct statement gives us the goal, cultivation of wisdom and virtue, and the what, truth, goodness, and beauty, and also the how, the seven liberal arts, and the reason to know, glorify, and enjoy God. In the book, The Liberal Arts Tradition, Kevin Clark and Ravi Jane use this definition. The ancients believed education was fundamentally about shaping loves. It is for this goal of passing along a culture that the curriculum existed. While particular practices and day school techniques might not be feasible in the home versus a classical day school, giving our kids an education with a classical goal and classical content and for classical reasons is very possible. So don't confuse a philosophy 
classical education with a particular method for implementing that philosophy. There can be numerous expressions of a philosophy. Usually particular practices are not individually mandatory in order to be doing the principles or the philosophy. Applications are outworkings that need to be situationally appropriate as well as based on sound principles. So instead of giving our children an education by mimicking techniques used in other settings, especially that of an institutional school, let's use the setting of our home and our family to our advantage as we homeschool. In fact, I believe that having multiple ages in our homeschool at the same time is actually an advantage. Age segregation for learning is a very modern practice done to model schools on an efficient industrial factory model. It's not classical. Factory model schooling is not classical. Classical education was always personal, intimate, relational, personal scaled. We homeschool in order to avoid the factory model and give our children an effective learning environment rather than an efficient one. Thus, our home life and our various ages working alongside one another is actually a perk. It's not a problem. Sure, it might pose some logistical problems, but most of those offer character training for each one of us involved as we learn to put the needs of others before our own and learn to not demand perfect circumstances before getting to our work. So let's talk about classically homeschooling with toddlers in the mix. The toddler has to learn to control his volume. He has to learn some of his siblings can't play with him right now. He has to learn to sit comfortably and listen to language that is above his head, all three of which are incredibly fruitful practices in his little life. They are sacrifices that he makes, but they are also practices which educate him. These lessons are the lessons of preschool. Learning the alphabet and shapes and colors is optional. It's not important. Don't worry about adding it on the agenda. Instead, learning to listen and control your emotions and choices, learning that some things are appropriate in some places and times, but not all places and times, learning to give up your desires for the sake of someone else, these are the lessons that we must teach our toddlers and preschoolers. These lessons require no curriculum, no checklist, and no tests. Instead, each day offers a multitude of tests, real life pop quizzes, and teaching opportunities. Our young children learn best in the midst of a bustling family home life because such life is replete with the lessons that they need most. How about classically homeschooling multiple ages together? You do that by focusing on truth. One thing that does not belong in a classical education is busy work. Busy work is a violation of the multum non multa principle, an education that insists on much, not many, means that whatever we are assigned to read or do should be rich and meaningful. It should be the best practice to learn the material. Most activities, comprehension questions, and even tests and quizzes are added busy work used by teachers to occupy a classroom all day and to assess knowledge because they don't and can't know each student's progress individually and see him use his knowledge throughout his life. The homeschool setting has the potential, the luxury, the need to eschew busy work, both on principle and on practical grounds. Homeschooling does not mean that you have to be sure that the preschooler can glue cotton balls to blue paper in order to learn about the sky. Just send him outside and tell him to see if he can see any shapes in the clouds. Whatever he goes out and absorbs is concrete truth, deep connection, real 
learning. Homeschooling does not mean that you have to be the one to build salt maps of Egypt or crafty versions of the solar system with your elementary children. Mummified chickens are not required. Read, draw, map, talk, write, and save the crafting for free time. The time, effort, and mess that they create, such activities do not actually solidify or aid knowledge or retention. They are not the deep work of learning. They are window dressing to give something to show off, something to convince everyone that we're having fun. Letting the learning happen in concentrated real doses and then leave plenty of free time where real creativity has room to bloom and grow. Real learning is fun when it leads to knowledge and interest, not when it has crafty proof. Above all, homeschooling does not mean that you need to be the one tracing letters in the sand with a three-year-old, having a five-year-old learn about seasons by cutting leaves out of paper when he could go make a pile of them outside, making a six or seven-year-old use sight word flashcards to speed up her reading ability, doing a science experiment that's mere fun and not a real experiment, nor real science with an eight-year-old, or harping on the 10-year-old to keep his handwriting legible while he fills out a page full of obvious short answers after his reading. What the classrooms do, what the curriculums suggest, are not binding on us. And they are oftentimes not the things that make up true, active, interesting, and ultimately fun and satisfying education. As homeschoolers, we can cut through the inane, the multa, the busy work, and spend our time only on what is most meaningful because we have so much more scope and time for encountering the real world in real relationship. We can also classically homeschool multiple ages by focusing on goodness. The curriculum of a classical education can be summarized as truth, goodness, and beauty with an aim towards wisdom and virtue. While we often believe that we are at our best when we remain undisturbed and our plans hum along, such times generally do not promote love, wisdom, or virtue. The peace of such times is a surface level peace that does not bear fruit in our hearts. And the same is true of our children. It does not build character virtue to educate them in an artificial environment that will not prepare them for any other setting of life. Classrooms might look like they are efficient and peaceful, but it comes at the cost of separating learning from real life and placing it outside the home, outside normal relationships, and outside the difficulties all the rest of the learning of their real lives will take place amidst. When children learn how to learn at home with interruptions, with annoying siblings, with distractions, with temptations to play, with people who love them and who know them intimately, they are learning in a real life context that will train their heart, mind, and conscience, their character, on an entirely different level. When their tutor for their mother is a tutor rather than a teacher, and tutoring is a much more classical model than a classroom filled with a single age group. When their tutor knows and loves them intimately, the instruction itself lends itself to virtue building. After all, the mother sees how the student is responding and can take that student's character and the character training needs into account in the assignment. The material is important for gaining knowledge. The work is important for gaining character. Learning in an environment where emotional defenses and public faces are down, the students are more likely to pitch fits, to argue, to complain. That's real. It's true. Your child will not complain as much if you put them in school. However, it is also true that the knowledge gained in the home environment is more likely to naturally sink down 
empty. It's part of his home environment. And any classroom teacher will tell you that the child's home environment is more instrumental in his success than the classroom, even if he's in a classroom. What happens at home goes past the defenses much faster. If the home environment is not only reading, learning, and doing, but also conflict resolution, work ethic, because the toys and the distractions are right there at hand and not helpfully removed, flexibility, self-sacrifice, putting others' needs before your own, then the environment itself is classically educating everyone just as much as the books are. So we also need to classically homeschool multiple ages by focusing on beauty. Beauty in our homeschool is so much more than artist study. To learn beauty and to experience beauty is not to learn a few techniques with a paintbrush and be told that you're imitating the great artists. Beauty is harmony, which can take many forms, visible, audible, spiritual. Beauty does not continence anything being out of proportion, including the time given to direct studies. Our home and our education, not only in the content, but primarily in the manner and atmosphere, ought to be conducted in, with, and toward beauty. The art on our walls and the art we study ought to be art that beautifully demonstrates truth and goodness, but more than that, the expressions on our faces, the manner of our dress, the care taken with our work ought to communicate and harmonize with beauty. Dissonance of thought and expression of knowledge and action must be resolved. Classical education does not demand that each student receives artistic training, but it does demand that our tastes, our desires, our loves, and our affection be given to what is objectively beautiful and love is always expressed and visible. The music we play in our homes cultivates taste and affections and preferences and is much more important in shaping than whether or not our children can play an instrument themselves. Audibly, our homeschools should seek beauty in expression, in tone, in interaction. Again, bringing the dissonant into harmony will be our primary role as educators. And we will find this dissonance most often in ourselves. Fitting words spoken well and in kindness and love ought to be the primary source of audible beauty in our homeschool. To focus on these is more classical than participating in a band or memorizing ditties. More importantly, education must be done in a spiritually beautiful manner and include spiritual beauty. When our educational life is all wrapped up in and inseparable from our home life, then we, ourselves and our children, are less likely to separate either from our spiritual lives or the spiritual dimension of the world. Compartmentalization is built into the industrial school model, whatever practices happen inside of it, whereas compartmentalization is unnatural and unneeded in home and family life. As Abraham Kuyper said, there is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not cry mine. Knowing that God sees and cares about your math page, including caring that you had a temper outburst about it that you must repent of now, is a part of living a beautiful, fully integrated life. As Stratford Caldecott said in Beauty for Truth's Sake, at its highest, leisure is contemplation. It's an activity that is its own justification the pure expression of what it is to be human. It's what we do. The purpose of the quadrivium was to prepare us to contemplate God in an ordered fashion, to take delight in the source of all truth, beauty, and goodness. Living within the bounds of spiritual beauty is scholae. Having time to think and to play with knowledge and understanding is the means and ends of a liberal arts education 
a classical education. If we fill our own and our children's time with every study and every activity under the sun, we're undermining the very education we're trying to impart. You and I can homeschool many ages all together in our homes well and classically when we function with a full-orbed view of the world and our lives, not returning to the compartmentalization that we were raised in, but seeing that all of life is connected. This view does not negate the need for serious study and for hard work, but it does call into question much of the work that passes for serious and needful in schools or co-ops, even classical schools and classical co-ops. The work of gaining knowledge from a book or at a table should never consume most of anyone's day. When we rid ourselves of busy work, we find that juggling the balls of many children's education is not burdensome or overly taxing. So much ground is covered in singing together, reading together, a math page tackled, and five minutes of handwriting. Even more ground is covered when our children under 14 have plenty of free time to integrate their knowledge into their lives and to cultivate personal relations and connections with a broad swath of the real world by being outside. So what do you need to classically homeschool multiple kids? You need good books, time to read and talk about them, thoughtful and engaged brain work, encounters with the real world, and discipleship in living well alongside others. All of these things, the home and the family, come fully equipped to provide best. If you want more encouragement for living this fully integrated life yourself as a homeschool mom and seeing the richness of a life lived for sanctification in God's calling on our lives, then you will love the Convivial Homeschool Gospel Encouragement for keeping your sanity while living and learning alongside your kids. Each chapter is short but meaty and will focus you on truth, goodness, and beauty even in the messy situations of real life homeschooling. You can find it wherever books are sold. The Convivial Homeschool by Misty Winkler. And remember through it all to repent, rejoice, repeat.